Alan Tudge, welcome. G'day, Chris. Are Aboriginal people living in remote communities in Western Australia making a lifestyle choice? Well, the Prime Minister made some comments yesterday and this morning in relation to investments which um, the Australian government puts and the Western Australian government makes into remote communities. And the point that he was making really was that individuals have a choice about where they want to live, but equally governments have to make decisions about where they invest their resources and put services in place. And what he was making the point about was that it's exceptionally difficult to invest a well-functioning school if you only have one or two families in a location. But is it a lifestyle choice or are these people living on their homelands? Well, in some cases they're living on their homelands, but all of us make choices about where we live and all of those choices are governed by um, a number of factors. Now, our objective really is to ensure that Aboriginal people have all the choices in the world just like non-Aboriginal people do. The way that they get those choices is by having a good education and by having decent employment. Because if you haven't got a good education, your choices are going to be significantly limited. So one of the points that we were making is that to get a good education, you need to be near a good school. And the good schools tend to be more in the larger settlements rather than in the very, very remote locations. And that's a perfectly legitimate argument, but we're talking too about the choices people make with their words. Tony Abbott is the Prime Minister. Should he have used the words lifestyle choice when talking about this very difficult issue? Well, it, it, is, a, it is a sensitive issue, Chris, but I think the overall point that he was making was the one that I've just suggested. Now, um, I support Noel Pearson's overall vision, which is to ensure that um, people have the opportunity to orbit, if you like, from their homelands to another location for school and employment, if they choose, and then to come back to their homelands. And one of his favourite sayings, and I used to work with him, was from Cape York to New York, which I think is a great vision. It's, what it says is that we should be giving people the capacity and the opportunity to take advantage of every opportunity in the world but then to return to their homelands should they choose to do so. I'm aware that you've worked with Noel Pearson. You are very committed to this. And today, Noel Pearson says that this statement by the Prime Minister is disappointing and hopeless. Um, I have great respect for Noel Pearson, and I particularly respect a lot of the policies which he has advocated in the past, including this orbiting concept, the concept whereby um, people can have a connection to their land, but equally they can go out to Melbourne, to Sydney, to New York, for employment, for education, and then return to their homelands. So in some respects, they're getting the best of both worlds. I think that's a vision that we should be supporting. But, the, but what you're doing, though, is just removing money from these communities and handing it back over to the West Australian government. Now, as the state government says, it costs $85,000 to provide services to an individual in some of these communities. But you haven't really got a policy plan. You've just withdrawn the funding. Well, that's not quite correct, Chris. I mean. Our proposal was in, re in reference to the municipal um, services and what we have done with every state government is negotiate an agreement whereby instead of the federal government delivering municipal services, we believe, as is the case across all of mainstream Australia, that local councils or state governments should deliver municipal services. And so we reached an agreement with the Western Australian government last year for them to start to deliver those services. And if they won't deliver those services, then what happens to the communities? You simply withdraw the services and where do the people go? Well, these are decisions for the Western Australian government in terms of where they invest their resources. The federal government has to make decisions also about where we invest our resources. Now, we want to support individuals. We want to support people having the best possible education. We want to support people having the best possible chance of getting a reasonable job and so that they can participate in the broader opportunities which Australia has to offer. But I can tell you, Chris, it is very difficult to have a well-functioning school for one family, for example, which might be living in an exceptionally remote location. And hence the Western Australian government, so I think, has decided that it would invest more of its resources in the future into some of the larger settlements. But don't you risk in simply withdrawing funding and allowing these municipal services to drop off that these people will drift into the margins of another community and be completely alienated there? Well, these are decisions of the Western Australian government, but the overall point is that we want people to have real choices about where they live and about what they can do in the future. 
real choices can only come about if people have a decent education. Because without a decent education, then your choices are going to be very limited, Chris. You're likely to be on welfare for the rest of your life and the likelihood of you being in prison skyrockets. So an education is the absolute essential ingredient for people to have meaningful choices. And that's why we're so focused on that. That's why our number one priority is insisting that kids go to school so that they can have those opportunities. But finally, can't you see how it doesn't look like you actually have a plan for these 1,300 people? Essentially, the plan was to withdraw funding and let the Western Australian government decide how they sort out the problem. That's your observation, Chris, not mine. I mean, we have made this decision with all of the state governments whereby municipal services should be delivered by the governments which are closer to the ground, either the local governments or the state governments, and we've entered into arrangements with state governments, um, financial arrangements, to transfer over those services. Alan Tudge, thank you. Thanks so much, Chris.